I'm Dr. Neil Skolnick, and today we're going to talk about the 2021 CDC Sexually Transmitted Disease Guidelines. These are important guidelines. They're being released at a time when STDs have never been at a higher rate in the United States. I love this topic because I think there's no other topic in medicine where diagnosis is as clear treatment is as effective, and the way that we handle things with empathy makes as much difference to patients that we take care of, and it combines perfectly both personal health care and public health. Today we're going to discuss chlamydia, gonorrhea, and PID. Next month we're going to cover herpes, trichomonas, and bacterial vaginosis. The main consequences of chlamydia and gonorrhea are progression to PID, or pelvic inflammatory disease. Fortunately, screening stops that progression. Recommendations for screening are clear. We should be doing annual screening on all sexually active women less than 25 years of age, and screening sexually active women 25 and older who have more than one partner or who have had a new sex partner since they were last screened. Annual screening for rectal GC and chlamydia should be performed among men who report sexual activity at the rectal site and selectively on women based on history. Let's now discuss treatment regimens and then partner treatment. Treatment for chlamydia has changed since the last guideline. Azithromycin single-dose therapy has been relegated to alternative treatment because it's not as effective as what is now the primary recommended first-line treatment, doxycycline, 100 milligrams twice a day for seven days. Azithromycin single-dose and Leviquin for seven days are now alternative therapies. The main reason is the lower cure rates with azithromycin. Recommendations for treatment of GC have also changed, primarily based around concern about emerging resistance, which we saw a lot of tofluoroquinolones back in the early 2000s. There has been a recommendation out for an increase in the dose of ceftriaxone used for both cervicitis and urethritis from the old 250 milligrams IM of ceftriaxone to the current 500 milligrams IM. The old guidelines recommended dual treatment with azithromycin as well. Now azithromycin should only be used if we're treating chlamydia in addition to GC. Let's go on to partner treatment for both GC and chlamydia. Partners need to be referred for evaluation and presumptive treatment if they've had sexual contact with the index case within the last 60 days. Depending on your comfort level as well as law in your state, expedited partner therapy can be used. Expedited partner therapy is giving your patient a prescription as well as information about the STD for them to go on and give to their sexual partner. There is no need for a test of cure. Uh, in fact, if you do a test of cure less than four weeks after the initial infection, it's likely to come back as a false positive. Retesting, though, is recommended at three months to look for reinfection. It's also suggested that we take a detailed sexual history. There's an opportunity for growth from learning that you have an infection and also the opportunity to consider discussing PrEP or pre-exposure prophylaxis for HIV for those in whom it is indicated. Let's now go on to PID. We think of PID as sexually transmitted, but it turns out that it's only sexually transmitted about 50% of the time. In order to diagnose PID, we need a high index of suspicion and a low threshold for diagnosis because the consequences of untreated PID are large. Outpatient treatment for PID includes initial, an initial IM shot, usually of ceftriaxone 500 milligrams, or cefoxetin, or another parental ceph third generation cephalosporin. And the IM shot needs to be followed by doxycycline 100 milligrams twice a day for 14 days, as well as, and this is new, metronidazole 500 milligrams twice a day for 14 days. The routine addition of metronidazole to outpatient treatment uh, is new in the new guidelines compared to the previous guidelines where it was given as an option, and that gives extended coverage for anaerobes as well as treats BV, which is often associated with PID. All women who are tested, uh, uh, who have PID, should be tested for other STDs, and they need to be retested for GC and chlamydia at three months. Of course, their sexual partners should be referred 
for treatment. If a woman has an IUD in place, it does not need to be taken out unless she is not getting better by 48 to 72 hours after treatment has begun. This is a lot of important new information. Next month, we're going to cover herpes, trichomonas, and BV. I'm Dr. Neil Skolnick, and this is Medscape.